we have heard about three dimensional world and fourth dimension of time uh, x y and z are the three dimensions and fourth is uh, the time dimension so fourth dimensional world is kind of imaginable you can imagine uh, the four dimensions but uh, when we go on higher kind of uh, dimensions like in six dimensions or five dimensions 11 dimensions when people talk about this and scientists are talking about this what do we actually mean uh like the higher dimensions of space like uh, higher dimensions of any kind what do we okay mean? so i can give you an analogy so what uh, i mean so where do these dimensions exist so in most uh, cases these dimensions are very compact and compactified again on around the planet scale, right? So these are tiny. Now you'd say, wait, why don't you feel them? But imagine, let's imagine a guitar. It has strings, right? And you can imagine, I mean, all the science that we, I mean, when we play it, uh, we don't really care about the thickness of the string. Mm. Or, you know, you imagine a string which is, you know, so we take it to be infinitely thin. And all this results that we do in, uh, you know, tidal resonances and things like that. These are, you know, textbook, textbook things. Now imagine that that string was not one dimension. In, I mean, just a linear thing. But it was like a straw. But the straw is so narrow. Imagine a hollow tube string versus, a, you know, Thin already. So it's you will not be able to distinguish unless you play it at a frequency where you excite uh, the modes of that small scale. This is what is happening. So the strings are there, uh, or these extra dimensions are there, but we are not probing any science which kind of leads to what we'd call the excitations of those degrees of freedom. So if it is one linear string, then of course waves can only go on there. But you can imagine if it is actually a straw, then you will have waves going along the length. But at high enough, in a you know, small enough wavelength, you will start exciting waves that are going on the surface of the straw in the other direction. Now, if that is there, then what needs to excite them are wavelengths which are of the scale of this uh, circumference of the straw. And those wavelengths are small, which means they have high, very high energies. So you have to perturb that object at very high energies to be able to see that there is structure inside. Right? For example, I gave you this thing of um, uh, you're looking at a crystal. When I'm looking at optical light, I don't see that crystal structure. I need X-rays to see it. Similarly, if there are additional dimension, I need to be able to have high, you know, physical processes happening at high enough energy that excite them. Now, again, I mean, maybe I'm making a habit of this. The only arena where this will play out is the earliest moments of the universe. Because there, we are guaranteed that we have we would have energy high enough, and if there are effects of that come in because they are extra dimension, they should show up in some observation. And that's a fun door. Okay, so so what is the amount of energy that? Yeah, so that's required? that's uh, that's very simple, right? So I told you about plant left to excite things on plant and to our minus thirty three. Meters, usually meters, so to excite wavelengths uh, of that scale, you need the energies which are 10 to 90 giga electron volts. Right? So that's the Planck energy. So these are all Planck energy, Planck scales, we've all related. 